All right, guys, so this is a very brief video about tendon pain, designed for patients who have tendon pain and may not completely or fully understand it. Now, it's not going to answer all your questions or tell you everything about tendon pain, but it will cover a couple of key points. And those points are, firstly, uh, pain is not clearly linked to pathology and is not necessarily related to damage. So even though you might feel really strong and severe tendon pain, it's unlikely that you're actually damaging your tendon. We know that pain is probably biochemical. <clears throat> so related to lots of biochemicals in the local tendon environment. But it's not just that simple. There are other factors. So there are, there are many factors that modulate or have the potential to modulate your tendon pain. One of those factors is just how sensitive the nerves and um, nerve connections are from your tissues all the way up to your brain. So sometimes these become sensitized. A good way to think about it is like an alarm system and it just becomes um, hypersensitive. The other things that can modulate your pain are things like your beliefs. So for example, if you um, are worrying about your pain, believe a very attentive to your pain believe that something bad might happen like you know potentially you're going to tear your tendon um, that can also influence your pain experience because we know that pain is just not the local tissues and it's not just the, the sensitive alarm system and it's just not your beliefs and past experience it's a combination of these and uh, that's how we get our output from the brain which is the pain that you experience so generally, patients will talk about these two things, um, uh, and you could you could consider these as two ends of a spectrum. So it feels like it is tearing, and that that might be something that a patient describes, and um, and and clearly this person is concerned that they might be doing damage to their tissues. The other end of the spectrum, some people are not concerned at all about their tendon pain, and these people tend to um, uh, push it and sometimes push beyond uh, what they should be pushing. Now that, again, doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna damage their tissues, but they're certainly gonna, in most cases, increase their pain experience. And a nice way to put that into a really easy to understand um, um, a diagram is to talk about low tolerance. So we've talked about the pain mechanisms. It's not necessarily related to damage. Um, or pathology. Um, so it's related to, to the pain system and biochemicals locally at some level. Um, uh, and what we see in tendinopathy patients is they have a reduced ability to do the things they want to be doing. And that's, a, that's the easiest way to describe it. So, you know, the running and the walking and, you know, even going to the gym or doing yoga becomes painful for some people. And, um, an important part of management is to progressively expose your body and your tendon to increasing loads that will allow you to develop load tolerance. So arguably, exercise is the only way to really develop tolerance again in your tendon. Now, that doesn't mean that you need to see someone, a professional, who's going to um, prescribe you um, a progression that's going to allow you to reach your goals. Some people work it out naturally. They reduce their symptoms in the short term, sorry, they reduce their activity in the short term and then start to um, increase it in a way that allows them to overcome their symptoms. But some change and progression of load is probably a really key and important mechanism and, and, and a good one to think about when you're thinking about why am I doing this exercise? You're primarily doing it to increase your low tolerance, but that's not the only reason. So another concern that patients often have is will the actual damage or pathology or the tear improve over time? And unfortunately, there's not much good news there. It, it for most people, won't improve over time, but that's okay because the tendon is probably still strong enough to function and to do all the activities that you need it to do. So it's really uncommon, and this is a good thing to remember, to have a sudden tear if you've got a painful tendon problem. Um, and the other reason 
we do exercise. So we've talked about pain and increasing load tolerance. The other reason to do exercise is to improve your function. And that's a really important reason for some people. So for the last slide, we're just going to consider how tendon pain, uh, what, to, what, what you can expect with tendon pain and how it might change over time. Let's just assume that when you start your treatment, you've got quite severe symptoms. In most cases, you might need to take some partial rest from things that are aggravating uh, or maintaining a symptom. So for example, you might need to reduce your, your running for a short amount of time to allow things to settle. And at a certain point, you're going to get to a point where you're able to start a functional progression to increase your load tolerance. And it's normal at this point to expect your symptoms still to fluctuate. So the symptoms still might go up and down um, as you're doing exercise to try and get your tendon pain better. So it's often not realistic to expect there's not going to be any pain during this process. But what we try and do is define what is acceptable. And there's a couple of points to note about this. So how much pain is acceptable during exercise? Well, some pain, minimal pain, you might say, or a little bit of pain is okay during exercise. So you might be doing your rehab exercises and it's okay to feel a little bit of pain. Now, some people define that as less than 5 out of 10 and that's, that's fine, but it can be arbitrary. For some people, it might be a little bit more or a little bit less. And the important thing that goes with this is that if the pain does increase after exercise, it settles really quickly after. So within a day or so, your symptoms are back to some sort of baseline. And the only way to really judge the baseline is to monitor something over time. So monitor something like, you know, for example, if you've got a, um, a hip tendon problem, you might monitor how it feels getting up from a chair and walking. Or you might monitor um, hopping for an Achilles problem. Uh, you might monitor how it feels to start a run or how stiff and sore you feel in the morning. So uh, these two points are really critical in uh, understanding how your pain is changing with activity and whether that's within a reasonable level. And another really good and important message for patients is that going through this progression is probably going to take weeks um, if not months. So it's going to take a long time where you're managing symptoms and they may be fluctuating. Um, and one other thing just to add that I didn't mention when we we're talking about this pain after exercise is also to note that even if the pain increases, say your baseline pain with something is a 3 or 4 out of 10 and even if it does increase a 10 out of 10, that's okay. That's fine. That's not a problem as long as it settles and recovers within a day. So how bad the pain is after exercise really doesn't bother us as long as as long as it uh, recovers relatively quickly. Um, so I joke with patients that they should they should get this as a tattoo. None of them have taken taken it up at, at this stage, but um, <laughs> it probably wouldn't be an attractive tattoo, but a useful one because these are really important messages for patients to understand. Um, I, hope, I hope none of them do take it up, but anyway. Um, and I think it's important because um, patients are often concerned about background pain and how much pain is normal. And these messages need to be reinforced. People often have questions and doubts and, um, you know, are they doing damage? Are they pushing too far? And this framework of low tolerance and understanding pain during and after activity, what is acceptable, is really important. Great. So that's the end of this very brief screencast. Um, I hope you've got something out of it. Remember, it's not all the messages that you need as a tendon patient, but some of the important messages that will hopefully help you to navigate tendon pain. Thank you.